My topic is white people trending towards extinction. Now, first question is probably extinction. And for some assumptions on the background, uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, we'll consider whites, not Hispanic whites, for simplicity. Whites are 12% of the Earth's population and declining to 9% by 2060. And here's the extinction part. White birth rate is below replacement levels in every Western nation. That's a fact that most people aren't aware of. Worldwide, whites are at 1.8 children per woman, whereas 2.1 is necessary to sustain a population. The 0.1 being to make up for uh, accidental deaths or diseases and things like that. Some examples, uh, Australia is at 1.77, Russia 1.6, Germany and Italy around 1.4. And one fact, fewer babies were born in Italy in 2014 than in any year since the Italian state was created. Here's a chart from the UN. The orange one in particular is the most important, and that is showing that ignoring my, uh, migratory trends, the population of Europe is due to decline at an increasing rate, starting at 740 million and by 2100 being below 540. And on the right-hand side, you can see the causal factors and the majority uh, contributing factor is fertility. Why you should care. Every race should support their own people and want them to exist. Exist. Everyone who supports racial diversity should support the continued existence of all races. And white people have brought some good things to the world. Let's look into some of the causes. One, obviously everybody knows the invention of birth control cause the reduction of birth rates across all races. Uh, proliferation of pornography is a more modern trend. Studies show that it decreases motivation and ambition. It makes people less satisfied with their physical relationships. And it subconsciously normalizes your sexual partner being with other people. Another one is some aspects of feminism has overshot their target. And in uh, removing barriers to females and emphasizing the value that they bring. In some areas, they've overreached into the stigmatization of males. Uh, one outcome of this and other factors is that over 50% of marriages in the USA fail, and only 31% of them are initiated by the man. A lot of people aren't aware of that. Alimony and child support are often granted to women at a rate equal to what is accustomed to, not necessarily what's sufficient, which can provide a perverse incentive for people to marry the richest person that they can, regardless of whether they like them, because in the event of a divorce, they have a fallback plan. And women are putting work before family. Uh, that's not to say that they're uh, not having both together, but at an increasing rate, some are foregoing family altogether to focus on work. More women are going to college, also delaying childbirth. Here's some of the trends that show as for undergraduate degrees with women in blue on this chart. There's actually more women, uh, significantly more, getting undergraduate degrees than even men these days. And under master's degrees as well, I know that Dr. Devers was saying this morning that the class that she's taught has been majority male, but the statistics show actually in recent history and the colors are reversed on this chart compared to the last one, that there's significantly more females even in the master's <coughs> degrees than there are males. And you can see the increasing rate of average age of mother at first birth is being delayed significantly. Uh, other uh, causes related in Dr. Weston's class, Claire, Bronte, and Leah, and I'm not picking on you, uh, presented Lean In, Women Work and the Will to Lead by Sheryl Sandberg. And the main takeaway was that America needs more women CEOs and that women need to put work before family in order to achieve this. And in particular, to reach the level of CEO, a lot are foregoing families altogether. And part of this presentation is to say that there should be uh, value placed on motherhood as well, and that sometimes it's undervalued in modern society. One tweet, feminism is mixed up with the muddled idea that women are free when they serve their employers, but slaves when they, serve their when they help their husbands. Moving on to other causes. Uh, a childless lifestyle encouragement, there's not a lot of mainstream media, TV shows, movies that have a pro-family message. A lot of them are anti-family and pro-childless. Societies of old uh, viewed childless as selfish. And so a lot of people say, well, in olden times, there was a lot of peer pressure on having children. And to explain some of the background as to why people used to think that way is they felt that 
if you enjoyed being alive and you enjoyed the fruits uh, that it brings, it, it's only possible because two people before you put in the work to birth and raise you. And therefore, not paying that privilege forward is can be considered selfish. Uh, also, almost every anti-parenthood article is depicted with whites. A century-long battle disproved the myth that all women want children. Of course, nobody assumes that all women want children. However, every woman's mother did want children. 100 women in 2016, parents who regret having children. Yet again, shown with a white mother and a white child. I'm 30 and I don't know if I want kids. What if I'm too selfish? What if I'm not that maternal? How to figure out whether you should have kids one day. With the, one of the movies mocking breast bumps. I don't like being a mother, meet the woman who regrets having children and thinks other, uh, other women should think twice before uh, they know what's good themselves for themselves and the world. Not very pro-family. This one I found particularly offensive. How having kids can ruin your romantic relationship rather than improve it. And the child-free life when having it all means not having children. Now, that's not to say that you there's anything wrong with people that don't have children. Of course there's not. But this is talking about the stigmatization that permeates both advertisements, magazines, TV shows, and movies. Other causes? The multiculturalism movement has in some ways overshot its target like the feminism movement has. So in the process of motivating the increase in success of non-whites and white majority societies and emphasizing the value that they bring, we have overshot the celebration of others and sometimes entered the territory of demonization of whites. One term is the non-Hispanic white. Whereas other ethnicities are granted positive identities, non-Hispanic white is specifically a negative identity. The counter would be if you called Hispanics non-European whites. You could see how that might be considered offensive. Well, non-Hispanic white could also be considered offensive. Yelling, I hate white people, and punching one isn't a hate crime, Canadian judge rules. This one's in California. The font's a little small. Due to a white student percentage above 30%, Walter Reed Middle School faces layoffs and increased class sizes. Star Wars The Last Jedi that came out this year, J.J. Abrams, the director, said, we wrote those characters, but when we went to cast it, one of the things I had felt, been into the Emmys a couple times, you look around that room, and you see the whitest fucking room in the history of time. It's just unbelievably white. And I just thought, we're casting this show, and we have an opportunity to do anything we want. Why not cast the show with actors of color? Now, I wonder if you switched the races in here, and you said the whitest effing room or a different race, would that be acceptable? Probably not. But when it's whites, that becomes acceptable. NBA gets an A for diversity. Shows, study shows 77% of the NBA players are black, 18% are white. So that's considered an A for diversity. It makes you wonder if the definition itself has been mutilated to instead be an inclusion of all to be a suppression of some. In the Django Unchained movie with Jamie Foxx, he was quoted saying, I kill all the white people in the movie. How great is that? I think if you replace that with any other race, a lot of people would be extremely offended. And yet, when it's whites, that seems to be more tolerated. At Drexel University in Pennsylvania, which has a student body of over 26,000, so this is not a small university, one of the professors wrote this past Christmas, all I want for Christmas is white genocide. And a lot of people were confused by that and retweeted him and said, well, what do you mean, white genocide? Is this guy serious? He followed up and said to clarify when the whites were massacred, during the Haitian Revolution, that was a good thing indeed. Now, a lot of people had some problems with that and contacted the school administration, but they claimed that he did nothing wrong. He served no punishment. I think that you can see why a lot of people might find that offensive. One more cause, pathological altruism. It's the idea that whites evolved in Northern European climate, as everybody knows, that's why we have white skin. Surviving winter required high levels of attention and care towards children and neighbors, which developed a sense of altruism. But sometimes it's taken too far and can become self-harmful. In modern multicultural societies with unresolved grievances over slavery and colonialism, some whites want so much to be altruistic they begin to hate themselves for history and become depressed. 
Antidepressant use rises 400% in modern years, uh, white women being at the top of the list. One finding shows that 14% of non-Hispanic whites take antidepressants compared to only 4% and 3% of blacks and Mexican Americans. Over the past two decades, use of antidepressants has skyrocketed among women in their 40s and 50s. The figure is one in four. A lot of people don't know that. That's something that we should talk about. It's controversial, but we should talk about that. Deaths of despair in midlife for white non-Hispanics going from the year 2000 to 2014. Significant increases. You might be wondering what's deaths of despair? It's deaths by drugs, alcohol, and suicide. Here's another chart where you can see that it's affecting both men and women, especially so amongst the less educated. So in conclusion, some of the possible factors behind the decline in white birth rate, pornography, some aspects of feminism overshooting and demonizing the family, encouragement of childless lifestyle and targeting whites, and a lack of pro-family messages, <clears throat> multiculturalism in some aspects overshooting and demonizing whites, and pathological altruism. And with that, we'll open up for a Q&A. So, your... sure, uh, I get that question a lot. What's what's the solution? Because people want to latch on to the solution and then debate that rather than admitting there's a problem. I think the first uh, thing that we need to do is just to admit that there's a problem. And so that's all I want to do today. I'm not here to discuss solutions. I just want to discuss problems because a lot of people say that this shouldn't even be talked about. Jonas. Do you think every woman should have a kid? I think it's fine if people don't want to have children, but I think that if a lot of the messages in the mainstream media are specifically anti-family, and there's a lack of pro-family messages, I think that's a problem that we should discuss. And clearly, it's impacting white people. Yep. I was wondering, is this happening across other races as well? So like, are we seeing a decline in just all black you know, races? And sure. So if that's the case, do you think a lot of these causes can be, you know, the reason for those two clients as well too? Yeah, so uh, some of these factors are definitely having negative effects on other races as well. Um, most of the rest of them are all above replacement, so it's less of a concern, I would say, than what I'm focusing on. Uh, and that's also, you know, from my perspective, I care about my people and there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, it's, you know, it's definitely affecting elsewhere as well, so yeah. I was wondering about the shift that you didn't talk about. If you thought the shift of economics, having children on a farm where having a child gave you an accretive benefit to the family as far as them making money, to the shift of kids costing half a million or more, you think that's going to have this having a large impact on on childbirth as well? Uh, yeah, that, that could definitely have an impact as well. Sure. Yeah. Um, do you think it's it's only white people or it's across all different races? Because we see a lot more interracial marriages now. Mm -hmm that brown people and white people were, you know? Oh, yeah. So do you think that's, that's one of the reasons, or? Well, like I was saying with Nick, uh, some, some of these factors are having effects on all different kinds of people. One of the reasons I wanted to focus on whites was specifically because the birth rate is dropped below replacement. So I think the estimates show that in 300 years, it would be a complete extinction. So I think that it's something that we should talk about. Then is it only white people, or it's uh, about about working people, because you know you mentioned that people who focus uh, or, or put uh, career over their personal life, yeah, and that tends to happen across every day, huh? Uh, so I'd have to spend some more time digging to learn the data. I know at least like the suicide deaths were a lot higher amongst the less educated, uh, but there's also a higher birth rate amongst the less educated. So I don't, I don't know. That. Yeah, Jones. So. <coughs> Would you say that these causes you just listed mm -hmm. are cultural in the, sense, in the sense that probably the society here is more individualistic and there isn't that societal support being encouraged? That's a great point. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Yeah, there's definitely different cultures amongst the different countries, and I think that is a possible factor. So, with this, what's your thought on interbreeding between races? Nothing wrong with it. I'm not here to discuss uh, that. I was just pointing out the uh, white birth rates. So, yeah. Um, you tied the depression pill usage to 
um, the birth rates there any other research you have that actually makes a uh, direct tie to the use of depression and then the and then you know could be made a direct tie but I I haven't seen any other information that ties those two information. <coughs> Yeah, so for the, the time that I had to prepare this, I don't have more, uh, but you know, we could we could definitely discuss in the future. Yeah, Nick? I guess uh, for me, I can, I can kind of see where you're coming from, where you have concerns, but I mean, is a question about you worry that there will be you know, some culture that will be, that will be gone 100 years from now? I guess, what is your major concern with all of this? Um, like, you know what I'm trying to ask? Well, I mean, it's, you know, uh, when anything's going extinct, it's something that can deserve to be talked about, right? So, yeah, it's a culture that we shouldn't lose, it's a people that we shouldn't lose. Yeah? So this might be controversial, but would you support one of the solutions that people should only I don't want to talk about solutions habit. today. I have a hard enough time even getting people to agree that this is a problem. So that's what I want to focus on today. Maybe sometime in the future we can talk about solutions, but if we can't agree that there's a problem, there's no point in discussing solutions, right? So for example, if someone had cancer, and you say, well, you need chemotherapy. But I didn't think they had cancer, that's not kind of crazy, right? So, yeah. The 12% of the whole world population is white. Is that, do you have recent statistics? Like, has it been declining for a while? And is it Yeah, so that that's amongst the uh, most recent 10 years. And so it has, I didn't, it was a good point, as I was thinking about that after I made this, is if I could have a chart that showed the decline, but I didn't have time to put that together yet. So it's been declining in the white population versus oh, yeah. and declining in the other? Yeah, because I think it was something like a hundred years ago, it was over 25% or something like that. Now it's down to 12, so something like that. But that also has a lot to do with, you know, if other races have a higher birth rate, there's nothing wrong with that. So Because it could also be economic, right? Like a lot of the other countries don't have this, the women don't have the opportunity that we have here. Oh, yeah. And so it could just be bringing it out of the result as far as like gender equality goes. Yeah, could be. Like could be. Urbanization. Anybody else? I don't want to pick on you too much. I am not. I didn't get one <clears throat> completely. Like, what is that to an ice of the family? Mm -hmm. Can you explain to me that better? And then, uh, so, because when we are going to school, <clears throat> Then they're really not having more children, so... Or they're delaying, but, you know, having fewer and things like that. Well, it's not to say at all that, that women that go to school are, and are doing anything bad. And that's direct cost because they're going to school? I'm saying how, that's one of the factors. How are those not tied to them? I'm saying that's one of the factors. Oh. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, so uh, in the sense that there's a lot more uh, anti-family messages than there used to be. There used to be like like uh, primetime television used to have a lot of very pro-family messages. Now you have a lot of ones, and I'd like if I had more time, I'd like to show some examples of those. Where a lot of modern ones, uh, you know, the, the the father of the household is always depicted as an idiot, and the children know so much more, or the wife knows so much more, or other ones where you know when children are shown, they're a hassle or a pain. Whereas in old, older shows, a lot of times there's a very pro message and emphasize on the benefits of it. And you don't see that here in this question. Last question, please. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to follow up with that. But when, like, when you did the fever back in the 50s, when you get into trouble all the time, like, cause a problem for his parents, you didn't know, start that far back? Or well, it's not, that that's not to say that ones in the past were purely focused on the good and ones that now are purely focused on the bad. Just more of an overall trend. That there's more emphasis on the bad and less on the good nowadays compared to the best. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.